Hey Stampers, happy Friday. Man, I hope you guys are as ready for Friday as I am, or maybe I hope you're not as ready for Friday as I am, but anyway. Um, this morning, I have a fun project to share with you for Maker Mornings with Meg, and it is a card for Halloween, and we are going to feature a designer series paper that I found in the clearance rack. So excited. So I had this, it's left over from last year's catalog, but this is a great chance to stretch your pennies a little bit and get something that is um, really pretty and really flexible uh, and at like half price. So paper is this one here. I'll pull it out of the package a little bit. It's called Magic in This Night and it has um, a kind of a variety. The colors in it were um, Cajun Craze, uh, Blackberry Bliss, Pretty Peacock, um, which is that pretty blue that is a, a retired in color, but also lots of black and white. And so we are going to use a trick for a card that I used last year where we turned the black and white paper into, so this black and white paper, into a card um, color that matched the project we wanted to work on. So uh, we're gonna do that again. And I know um, I've said before that orange is my favorite color, but uh, or I say orange is my favorite color, but then when it comes down to it, it's usually purple is my go-to. So we're gonna go with purple um, because I noticed that the, um, in the US at least, the black um, sparkled back glimmer, glimmer glitter paper is out um, of stock. And so we're gonna use the silver, um, which has that, um, oh, you can see reflections in it. That's kind of funny. Uh, we're gonna use the silver, which has this little bit of purple tint to it. Um, for two of the pages because it's absolutely gorgeous with this card. Um, so I'm gonna give you all the tips and tricks and I will turn my camera down and we'll get started. So, hey Louise and Darcy and Karen, glad you guys are here. So, all right, um, for our project, we are going to use a whole bunch of the dies. Uh, I didn't even show you the stamp set. Um, from the Frighteningly Cute stamp set here. Um, so Frighteningly Cute is a bundle and it includes um, both the, uh, sorry, includes both the um, stamps and the dies. Uh, and there are a number of these. Here's the ones that I didn't use for today. Um, but we're going to use a number of these. I love this element. And we're going to talk about um, these two and how they are a great placeholder that really um, helps to sort of set your card up um, so that you have a good focal point, okay? So let's bring in our card base. So I have a piece here of the designer series paper and this is cut to uh, 11 and a half by four, okay? And then it is scored at uh, five and a half and 10 and a half. And what that's gonna let you do is fold like this and fold this last inch up. So you have a designer series paper card base, I call them DSP card bases, where you have um, the like whole front and back of your paper showing on your card, which is one of my favorite tricks. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and base this on a piece of um, basic black cardstock here so that we have, um, hi Becky, uh, so that we have a really good um, base for our card. So one of the things about a DSP card base is that it's a little bit um, lighter weight paper than the actual cardstock cards. And so what you wanna do is give that some extra strength um, and so we're gonna do that. Now, you guys um, who've been watching my videos for a while, you know that one of my favorite things to do is add an extra layer to just pop things off the page. And so I'm gonna bring in a layer of basic white and pop that on here and check out how that really um, pops out our designer series paper from the background and just gives it a really um, nice extra punch. So let's go ahead um, and layer those pieces. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about decorating the front because there are some um, tips that you will want to know about. I guess I'm adhering this in a weird order. Um, there's some tips that you would wanna know about um, for a DSP card base so that you uh, make sure your card is, is really nice and sturdy. So, all right. If you needed the size on this, this is four and a quarter by five and a half for the black. And then the white, um, I just take that same size and I reduce each dimension by an eighth of an inch. Um, so I find that's the easiest way to measure it, but um, or to not have to measure it, I guess, and get weird three eighths of an inch kind of numbers. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and stick this on. So now we have 
a card base here. Oh, and I kind of, oh well, I shouldn't have stuck it down yet, but we'll make it work. <laughs> okay, because the next thing I wanna do is I want to bring in that purple color. So I have Fresh Freesia, which is going to be our accent color here for the front. And I have a strip of um, the Fresh Freesia cardstock. So we're gonna go ahead and strengthen the front of our card straight off the bat. Um, by layering this here. And I'm using Seal Plus um, for these elements. I'm just gonna make sure this is straight. I'm using Seal Plus for these elements um, because it gives us um, the strongest bond. And then I always like to cut from the back side when I'm trimming edges, just because the scissors don't get in your way, at least if you're right-handed. And then I'm gonna pop another layer of Seal Plus on there to just close that off, okay? So we have um, our card base kind of set and we're gonna do some decor, the front and the inside. Margie says she just got the stamp set. Um, so this will hopefully get you, uh, get you some good ideas, Margie. Um, okay, so now, and I realize this is kind of crooked here. We're gonna ignore that or pretend it was intentional. Um, but in any case, it's not gonna be a big deal, and you'll see why, because we're gonna add some decor to this. Now, next part, Fresh Freesia. I want to go ahead, like I showed you at the beginning, and color this paper so that it matches the rest of our project. So, I'm gonna use my blending brush and pick up some color here. So just wipe on your pad and then swirl on your paper. Now, you probably are thinking, Meg, I can't see that color. You're right, I can barely see it either. So Fresh Freesia is a little bit light, so instead I brought in Highland Heather because it's gonna give us a little darker color. So I'm gonna swirl on here and then swirl on my cardstock. And now can you see that purple popping in there? Okay, so I'm going to give us um, just some sporadic shading. Um, the great thing about this paper is that you really can't go wrong with how much um, purple shading you get on there. The only thing you can go wrong with is if you put it together in the wrong order like I did and you wanna keep that white on the sides nice and pristine. So I'm gonna stay away from the edge where usually I'd make sure I overlap the edge. All right, and then we can go on the inside of our card and here we can do the same thing but now we're kind of free to uh, overlap the edges because you can see that I haven't assembled this part of the card yet. So. I'm gonna add a little more purple in those open spaces, which makes it look like, oh my gosh, that was just the perfect designer series paper. You wanted to use purple, and look, you had a paper that matched. Well, no, not really, but you can make your paper match. It's one of the beauties of black and white designer series paper. You can grab a blending brush and make it happen. And actually, you know what, it's bugging me that it's not over the edge, so I'm just gonna open this here and figure that out. It's all about, you know, figuring out how to recover from those little things, right? Okay, there we go. Now our color is um, spread a little bit further. Okay, so let's go here now and go ahead and um, add the uh, frightfully designed, Kim says. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so let's go ahead and work on our embellishments now. So I said um, that I wanted to use these dies and the um, spider web is really cute on the front, um, but I think instead of the spider web, I want a scene that includes this fabulous tree here. Um, but the spider web is my favorite die in the set, so we're definitely gonna use that. It's gonna go on the inside. So let's talk about um, this spot here. Uh, I love this, um, this little um, frame here that's gonna go on the front of our card, which is part of the frightfully cute um, dies or frightful, what are they called? Frightful tags dies. Um, the tag is great shape. We have our little um, tree here and we have our moon, um, which is gonna go across here. And then we need a greeting. And I decided we're gonna go with the which way to the candy one here. Um, so how are these pieces gonna come together? Mm -hmm. So first of all, we're gonna do our die cutting from this gorgeous silver foil specialty paper. Um, it comes three different patterns to a pack. One is silver, like straight silver. One is this smooth, um, slightly purpley color. And the other is this grained, um, like brushed uh, metallic look paper, which is, I love. So um, we're gonna go ahead and die cut from this brushed metallic with our shape. So I have this one here. Isn't that gorgeous? That texture is fun. And I have um, the tree. So we've got our two elements um, here that we've die cut. Okay. All right. Now we need, um, we're gonna need to make this show up. So let's go ahead and do some stamping here. 
Um, I'm gonna stamp a moon in the um, Fresh Freesia. So we're gonna stick with that as our base color and go ahead and die cut that. And for this, there is a circle punch, uh, or circle die included in this set, which is the perfect size circle there. And then let's do our greeting. And for our greeting, I'm gonna grab my Memento ink pad and ink this one up. Remember when you're using a fabric covered pad like Memento, it's twist, twist, tap, tap when you ink, okay? But when you're using a um, firm foam pad, it's always just like mouse ballet, tiny taps to ink your stamp. Never twist on the foam because you don't want to tear that. Okay, so we've got which way to the candy. We've got our circle moon. We're going to go ahead and use this die twice so that we can cut both of those pieces out with the same shape. And so through the magic of television, we have uh, these ready to go. Okay, so let's See what happens when we try and put these together. So I have my moon, I have our greeting, I have our um, piece here with the like tag in the back. And you know what, this tag is too small. Super, super sad. Um, I wish it was taller. So I'm gonna give you one of my favorite tricks for using die cut shapes and that is to make them taller. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring my trimmer in here and I'm going to use my cutting blade and let's go ahead and take this. I think I want um, these on like an angle. So I'm going to angle cut my tag here um, to stretch where we want it. So when you want to stretch something, all you have to do is come up with a layout that lets you disguise the fact that you've just cut a big chunk out of the middle. Okay. So let's bring this back in here and we're gonna come back to our trimmer because my favorite die is going to, um, we're gonna use that to do my favorite die also. So that trimmer is a handy tool today. All right, so I'm gonna kind of arrange these as if it was, you know, all one thing. We're gonna have our moon up here. We're gonna have our greeting down here and we're gonna have our tree to kind of disguise that. All right. Now, if you like studied this, you would notice that these pieces are not actually um, kind of like this shape doesn't make sense, but for our purposes, it's ideal. So I'm gonna take one off at a time and I'm gonna use my multi-purpose liquid glue, green lid glue, which I love, and I'm gonna pop them back on here. I like to remove them kind of one at a time so that I know um, that I'm not like totally messing up my spacing where I, kind of sketched out where those would go. Okay, all right, and then we're gonna go back. Now, usually I would wanna pop these up on um, Stampin' Dimensionals. I guess I can. I was gonna say I would stick these down flat because I don't want anyone to notice that there's stuff missing underneath, but you know what? I think we've done a good job of cutting our angle that it's just gonna really hide that anyway. So pop a dimensional under each one and then add these here. So these um, little moon dots kind of go off to the side. Which way the candy here um, is going to go like that. And then we're going to come back with our tree and I'm going to add this with the um, multi-purpose liquid glue again. So if you can see the glue, it is enough. I know white on white is hard for you guys to see. Um, but remember, you don't need to glob this stuff on. It is not Elmer's um, and it is uh, really strong so it does take a second to grab so you always want to just stick a block on there or something for a second um, and while we do that I'm going to talk about the inside of our card because that is um, also a fabulous part of this when you have a DSP card base the inside of your card is already decorated because you have um, the I'll cover this up because you have that um, layer there that is already you know giving you the decor but this is a great palette and like i said we haven't used my favorite die yet so i'm going to show you um, how we're going to use my favorite die so let's see that's probably dry but now yep there we go so we have this set and i'm going to come back um, and add this white layer now i'm not going to attach it yet because we're going to do some stuff with this um, but i wanted to bring in one more die cut so my favorite die from a frightfully cute bundle is this spider web and I used this on something recently 
Oh, I don't know where that card is to show you. Anyway, I used it on something recently because I super love this one. Um, and I'll see if I can find the link and put it in the video tutorial description. If you need supplies for anything, the description for this video, um, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, it has a link that includes um, a link to shop for all of the pieces. And I always appreciate when you guys shop with me um, because it helps to support these videos. So, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this. Here it is. Um, I have just a couple teeny little pieces that I can um, pop out. Let's see, sometimes if you just flick them, they pop out. And this one is gonna work great that way. So um, the dies are really terrific and give you a really nice clean cut so you don't have to work at getting those extra pieces out. Now, I want this one to fit some here. Tanya said she didn't get notified this morning. You know what, Tanya, I don't know why either. It's so weird because um, the first stampers who logged on this morning were names I'd never seen before. So welcome to you guys. Um, but you never know with Facebook, right? So just mark your calendars, 9.30, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 Central Time, and, and you know I'll be there. So, all right. S this spider web goes with a perfect stamp, the spider itself. So let's bring in our basic, um, our black memento. And now... A word of warning. When you have a stamp that is super narrow here um, and just one tiny, <coughs> excuse me, bit of um, the image is gonna contact your paper and you have all this black over it, you have a ton of force pushing down on a teeny, teeny little area. So it's really easy to over stamp this. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So here is an over stamp. I'm pushing too hard and I get this, okay? So if you've ever seen this before, raise your hand. I know it's sad, um, but the uh, thing you wanna watch for um, for this, there's a couple of solutions. So one, when you ink your stamp, make sure you're not over inking it and then flip it over and you can take your um, finger or um, honestly, this is what chamois are great for. Um, grab your chamois and just take the edge. I kind of fold it around my finger like that sometimes and just knock the ink off the background of your stamp, okay? Now, I don't do this for all my stamps. You guys have probably, like, you've never even seen me do this before, but I would do it for something like this where it's really, really narrow, and I know I'm likely to have an issue. Now, the other thing you can do um, when you're stamping is just sort of give it your best shot by just holding for a second. I am barely pushing. I'm making sure that the, the contact is actually um, on here. Uh, so the stamp is contacting the paper, but I'm not pushing really at all. And then I can escape and get a really nice image there. Okay, so remember that when you have skinny images. Um, we're actually going to stamp our greeting also. Um, and it is a pretty skinny image too. Well, I think we're going to stamp our greeting. I can't. There it is. Okay. Um, and same thing. Sometimes you'll find um, that a stamp is cut a little bit unevenly so that there's a little less rubber on one side and a little more rubber on the other. So that is where you're also gonna wanna take your chamois, just clean that. Um, or you can be very careful and take your paper snips and just trim the rubber. You don't want to undercut the foam and you don't have to take very much off, okay? So all I'm doing, put stray cardstock in there, is just trimming a little, little tiny um, fringe of extra rubber off the side, okay? And that can also help you not catch an edge. Okay, so inking carefully, checking after, and then stamping. Now, this is gonna be crooked, so hold your, hold your breath, um, because if it's crooked, it's okay. Eh, it's not too bad, okay? But there's nothing, um, well, okay, there's lots of things more painful, but it's always painful when you stamp a greeting, your card's all finished, and you're like, ah, it's all you know messed up. So the other solution to that is go ahead and on your spare paper, um, that you're die cutting from. Use the conveniently included die from Frightfully, um, Frightful Tags dies. Cut that out and we have um, this piece that I can pop right on here. So let's go ahead and, oops, I just flung the lid of my glue across the room. I'll get that later. <laughs> All right, oh, Tanya says she has overstamped. Yeah, it happens. Oh, Pepper. Our dog is going to check out what I've dropped on the floor. You never know when it might be yummy. Fortunately, she didn't think that was yummy. Okay, so I've got my greeting on there. Now come back to this die, which we still haven't put, in, put on our card yet. 
Um, we're going to come back to our ink though because I have some um, envelope inking tips that um, are great for using these pieces. So, All right, so our die, I'm going to cut it. Uh, I love using cut die cuts because um, it extends. You only need to have one die cut, but it really extends the design elements, okay? Uh, so we are gonna pop this one on here, and then rather than do this way, I kinda like to twist it just to change it up. We're gonna put this one up here, all right? And our conveniently unlidded multi-purpose liquid glue. I think I might've forgotten to put this one in the video um, supply list today. So just remember multi-purpose liquid glue if you're looking for a fab glue to do your detailed attachments. Remember to add a block to the top because it doesn't grab instantly. And um, Jenny, Pepper would be happy to see you too, Jenny. She likes, likes everything. She just loves people. Um, we just said she'd be a great uh, therapy dog. Let's see. Okay, Becky had an idea. She said, would it be cool to die cut the spider web on white and then the designer, ooh, designer paper would show through. Yes, you could totally do that. Um, and actually, you could even do both. Like you could die cut the paper out um, and the um, part in the back because what's going to happen is when you die cut this, it's going to actually cut um, a shadow so it'll cut out a whole shape because this would be lots of little pieces. So you'd end up with um, black. Oh my gosh, I love that idea. Okay, so if we were doing this um, and we cut this, our flower would show through the back, um, our flowered paper, and then the dye would sit on top of it. So, ah, so pretty. Okay, Becky, if you do it, you'll have to show us. That sounds really fun. Um, let's see, and Jenny had a suggestion. Check your settings on my page. Oh, Facebook has had a round of unchecking um, your, your notification settings. So yeah, thanks, Jenny. I appreciate that. So if you want to um, get notified, make sure you recheck your settings. All right, so we're going to stick this in. And then, like I said, we're going to move to our envelope because we're not done with these stamps. So remember with the seal adhesive, keep on rolling your wrist so that it gets a full, um, a full pull and uh, you don't have to forward your adhesive all the time. Okay, oh, I love that idea, Becky. Okay, so there's our card, and like I said, we need an envelope to go with it, and we're gonna stamp it at the same time, because otherwise we always forget. So I have two different um, sort of stamping collage ideas. If you stamp with small people, um, kids, one of my um, one of the things I love about stamping with kids is that they love to create scenes. So, um, they would take the stamp and they would build their whole little picture um, because you know kids are used to making drawings with paper and pencil. So when they pick up a set of stamps, then they kind of do the same thing, right? They draw, but with the stamped images. So um, if you uh, have small people you stamp with, this is a great one because it includes lots of different storytelling type images. So for ours though, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring this witch in here because it's like the preview of the greeting. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp in Fresh Freesia. So we're kind of previewing our color and get that moon there. And then I'm gonna come back with our uh, Memento Black, twist, twist, tap, tap, and stamp the witch right across the front of our envelope. And I love this deep black. So um, just really pretty. Okay, so there's the front, but we're not done because we're gonna build our story on the back of our envelope. All right, so on the back, um, we have all these cute things, the cat and the pumpkin and the bat, um, and I really wanted to use those. So let's go ahead and put a cat. We're gonna kinda do a bottom corner. Now, um, I couldn't decide at first which corner, but I decided to go with this one because I wanted to, um, the cat's like looking this way, and so I wanted to draw the eye across that way rather than having it look off the page. We're gonna give our cat a little pumpkin to sit by, and then we're gonna bring in this bat, and we're going to give our kitty something to look at. And I'm just gonna turn, and we're gonna spread these bats kind of across the top of the page. Just turn a little bit each time. Remember, there, you're putting a fair amount of um, pressure on this image, so you don't want to, or on this stamp, so you don't want to um, over stamp. You don't wanna catch edges and stuff like that, so. All right. Okay, so there we have, and I missed a little bit here. I suppose you could go back and do that, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Um, 
So there's sort of the back with our fun uh, elements here. So, all right. So either way, um, you can decorate your envelope. There are lots of pieces included in this stamp set that give you lots of different possibilities for making the, the most of it. Yeah, the envelope, which is fabulous. I really like that one. Um, so certainly like this could be the main element of your card. You could put that element on here. Um, lots of different possibilities for that. So uh, the, her broom sticks out a little bit. So if I was wanting to die cut this circle, um, there's a trick that you can do uh, if you guys are not aware of this. So pretend this was just cardstock. Now, if I do this, it's gonna cut off the tail of her broom, which could still be cute, but um, there's a solution for getting a die to cut um, only where you want it. And that solution, let me grab my plates here. Um, that solution is to have the plates um, only put pressure where you want the die to cut. So um, you're gonna wanna look for the edge here. It's kind of a finicky process, but um, so what I would do is I would have this uh, lined up right here, okay, like that. So can you see that my die isn't gonna cut where this um, element is? Um, or you can just put the whole thing on this way and then make your top plate cut only. Let's see, you can't hold it at the same time make your top plate be the one that adds the pressure only. Cause you're, you're only gonna get die cut pressure where you have both plates together. So you see how this would cut like this. It wouldn't cut this part of the circle, which means I could run this through my die cut machine and then I would, could fussy cut just that little bit, but still have the front of the circle be a perfect die cut. So we are all about the tricks, uh, the tricks and tips today um, for making the most of this fun set. So. All right, I uh, hope you guys are excited about this. Um, the directions for cutting the DSP card base are at the beginning of the video if you need those, um, or I'll put them in the video description too. Um, so the DSP is 10 and a half, sorry, 10 and a half um, by uh, four inches. So you can get three of them out of a sheet and then you're gonna score it at five and a half and 10 and a half and that last inch is what folds to the front there, so. Lots of good possibilities for DSP card bases. Thanks guys, I'm glad you like this one. Um, whoa, <laughs> we're like off kilter here. Um, so that's our Friday stamping. I hope you guys have a super fabulous weekend. Um, I hope you have some time to get some crafting in. Um, make sure you, uh, you know, send the cards that you're making. Um, share some smiles with people in your life because really we can make a difference a little Bit of cardstock in an envelope with a message is basically like a paper hug. So um, share some of those with people around you and make the most of what you're doing. So um, you're welcome, Roxanne. So glad you guys like this one. And I will be back on Monday. Um, oh, I was gonna say the Frightfully Cute dies that I just showed you um, today, Frightful Tags dies, they are right now on back order in the US market at least. Um, and the projection is that they'll be back um, next week sometime. So I would, feel pretty decent about going, oh, oh my gosh, I didn't embellish our card front. Okay, we'll get back to the second, but um, I would feel pretty good about maybe, you know, getting those dies and still hopefully having them in time for Halloween. And if not, heck, you're saving on the um, clearance rack paper. So yeah, save your, save your dies for next week. Okay, or next year. <laughs> All right, so let me bring this back in um, because conveniently the Frightfully Cute, um, Frightfully cute adhesive stars are the perfect matching colors here. So for a fresh freesia. So let's um, just pop a couple of them on here. I'm gonna put one down here. And then I don't like handling these. So let me get my take your pick tool out. And you're gonna do the um, slide and stick technique, which basically means use the putty tip, slide your star, and then stick it on your card or slide and, slide and slap, whatever you like. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four. Let's put one more there. Um, so there we go. Okay, so that's our actual finished card complete with the self-adhesive star. So, all right guys, have a wonderful Friday and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on Monday. Thanks so much for stamping with me today. Bye-bye.